Hi, yeah. My name's Fiona Andrews, and I work for a multi offshore charity, Dementia Forward, and we support people who are living with dementia. And um, over the weekend, there's been quite a lot of chatter about um, the video that's come out um, showing um, the debilitating side of living with dementia. And I just really wanted to put this out because I've been thinking about it all weekend. Um, and I've just, there's a totally different aspect to this. And I'm going to talk about how we lived with dementia with my dad and how everything, um, changed, but we changed as well. And, and it wasn't dead. It, it wasn't death straight away. In fact, it was the entire opposite. Um, so this is my dad on the screen and my dad died in uh, June. 2022, um, but he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2018. And my dad was quite a charismatic bloke. He lived up in Durham and um, three kids. We all lived in York. And when all the grandchildren were small, him and my mom would come down and um, look after the kids so that we could all work. Um, and so the kids were really, really close to grandma and granddad. But grandma and granddad liked their time up in Durham as well. But Things started to change with me dad um, and it happened like quite slowly. And when we sort of really got to grips with something was um, not right here, um, my dad went to uh, his GP and he was eventually uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And I can remember my mom ringing us and telling us. Now, at this time, I was working for Dementia Forward and so I knew what was coming with this. But working for this charity as well, I also knew that there was lots that could be done. And we spoke to my mom and dad about moving down to York which is where we were, kids and grandkids. Um, and after a while, they said, yes, they decided to do that. And so they moved down. And my mum and dad have had like a fantastic relationship, like for the whole of the life. Um, they just absolutely besotted and love each other. Um, they've been together for like 50 years, 50 odd years. And, you know, they lived in each other's pockets and, um, it was really great to have them both down here in York. I know that they gave up a lot when they went, when they left Durham, when they left their family. Um, but we really made sure that when they moved down to York, that they still had their Durham connection. You know, we still kept in touch with friends there and we, we went back up there every now and again. But they sold their house up there and they built a house down here. And that's where they lived from then on. I just want to give a different perspective because, you know, my dad was 76 at this time, 76, 77. And although nobody likes to think about their parents dying, we kind of know that it's going to happen at some stage. And during the time before my mum and dad came down to York, we would, especially when they didn't need to come down because the kids were all now at school, um, we wouldn't really see my mum and dad too often. We would speak a bit on the phone, um, but we might not see them for months at a time because life just gets in the way. Um, and so, of course, when they moved down to York, we saw them all the time. We saw them every single day. Um, and me, my dad was a real sociable bloke and he liked to be around people. So we knew that it was that important that we linked my dad in with like lots of things when he came down here. And that's exactly what we did. You know, we, we, we kind of feel that, you know, with dementia, everything immediately slips away. But after my dad's diagnosis, like my dad wasn't dead. <laughs> he wasn't actually even dying. I mean, we're all dying, aren't we? But my dad was full of life and we kind of really needed to embrace that and make sure that he made the most. I'll tell you what dementia did for us as a family. It allowed us to focus on the important things and that's exactly what we did. You know, the, the peripheral things kind of we let float away and we sort of really started to stick together as a family. Me and my brother and sister who were all really, really busy with kids who were dead busy as well. But when my mum and dad came down here, a lot of focus was put on my mum and dad. Um, and, and dementia allowed us to do that. Um, it allowed us to focus that time isn't infinite. You know, we have a certain amount of time on this earth and like we really need to spend it well. And that's exactly what we started to do. And so we linked my dad in with um, all of the wellbeing stuff that Dementia 4 would do. And my dad was a little bit hesitant about it at first because there's got dementia on there. And my dad was like, hmm, you know. Um, but once I got him through the doors and he met the people in there who would just lovely, great, friendly, active bunch, chatty and doing stuff. My dad really, really enjoyed it. And as you can see here, he's out there doing hula hoop. <laughs> now, this is a guy who 
North Eastern guy, like liked his work and then clubs and uh, you know, work down the pit and all that. Um, but he had a way about him that was just very friendly and he got on with a lot of people and we just really, really encouraged that. Um, my dad's not dead there, is he? He's he's actually living um, and he's happy and it, it, the sun's out and it was very joyous. And what it allowed us to do as well as a family is it allowed us to capture all of these moments. We got lots of moments of my dad and my mum during this time doing great, happy things. Um, I think the narrative just needs to change on this disease. Yes, it is an awful disease, um, but you don't die straight away from it. Um, and I'm going to show you kind of a little bit like what we did. So I said that my dad really liked um, the worker men's clubs up in Durham. So we knew that we had to kind of replicate that down here in York. Um, and so my brother um, linked him in with like a local uh, club. Um, and my dad used to spend Saturdays in here. He can see on the right hand side there, he's eating his, his pie. <laughs> That he bought from the bar um, and there he's playing snooker so like he joined the snooker team and, and the guys in the club like accepted me dad played snooker with him sat around and chatted with him um, and he used to have like really nice Saturdays in there with me brother um, once again like me dad was progressively getting worse with his dementia but you can see right there that he's not dead <laughs> you know we didn't have to grieve him dying over and over again actually what we did was we just we just celebrated him living um, and my dad really likes sport. Um, he really likes football, but actually he really likes all kinds of sport. And I really like rugby. So I asked my dad if he fancied coming to watch rugby with me. And he said, well, yes, of course I would. And we just spent many happy a weekend, um, down at Bootham Crescent, um, watching the, watching rugby there. Uh, York City Knights were absolutely brilliant. Um, I introduced them to my dad. I told them about them. We did some awareness training for the club. Um, and they really got on board with them, you know, becoming dementia aware. And as you can see there, my dad's like in his element. And, you know, when the players would run out of the pitch, sometimes my dad wouldn't really quite know which way they were going or who was playing for who. But the atmosphere was the same as being in a football ground. Everybody stood up and everybody cheered. There's a, there's a thing about coming together with sport, isn't there? And my dad liked all of that. So, of course, we included him in it. And he was flag-waving and he was up and he was clapping, you know. And we had our pie and our bovril at half-time. Um, and once again, my dad isn't dying there. <laughs> my dad's absolutely living a very nice life. And what I would say as well is that this is stuff that we would never have done had my dad not got dementia. My dad would have been in Durham and we would have still been down here having our busy lives. But when we knew that we didn't have a lot of um, maybe great quality time with my dad, certainly not the decades that we were expecting, um, we decided to fill every single moment with really great things. Um, and you can see that my dad's happy. We're happy. We bonded fantastically over this sport and so did the whole family. So that's my husband there as well on the screen. We all went and did this together. Um, and what we also did with Dementia Forward was like really great things. This is just like one example. So we all went out with uh, the fabulous Wet Wheels who um, run this great um, outward bound um, activity of, of going out on a boat. So we all went uh, with them. There was a big gang of us went from the uh, Wellbeing Cafe, um, Dementia Forward's Wellbeing Cafe. And we all got on a boat with the Wet Wheels crew and um, we just had another absolutely great afternoon. Now, my dad couldn't drive his car at this time. In fact, it was the first thing that went for my dad. That was one of the reasons why we knew my dad uh, was starting to change was because um, he couldn't drive his car anymore. There was just problems with it. And he ended up having to get his car taken off him, which was a big wrench for my dad. And that was really when we found out that my dad actually had a dementia. It was the thing that started off the whole journey, if you like. Um, and so it was quite important for my dad to actually have that feeling of being able to drive again and the wet wheels guys knew that and so there's my dad in his absolute element with his hat on sitting at the wheel um, and he really put his foot down <laughs> he was really fast in that boat but of course it doesn't really matter does it and um, my dad absolutely loved it and once again my dad isn't dead there <laughs> very much alive and kicking and very much speeding away on his boat and we spent a lovely day in would be eating fish and chips and uh, hanging out and drinking coffee and, and riding on the boats and stuff. It was, it was um, smashing. 
Um, another big joy I said my dad like really liked football. Um, and my son plays football, and so my dad would come with us, and he would watch my son's football. And that's my son on the right hand side there doing a, one of these big long throw-ins. Um, but you can see my dad there on the left. Um, things were getting a little bit difficult with my dad talking at this point. Um, and his mobility wasn't great, so you can see he's got his sticks down there. Um, but he would come with us when we would have the tournament, so he would come to watch my son play football. And of course, he got then involved with the football crowd, all the um, lads there and all the parents there. Um, and I told them that my dad had dementia, and so they kind of made allowances for my dad when he really couldn't sometimes get things. Um, everybody was just dead kind and friendly because most people are <laughs> when you when you need help. Most people are really helpful. Um, and so you can see here that my dad, we've just spent a whole day watching a, a tournament. Um, there was an ice cream van. My dad had quite a sweet tooth at that time. Um, and of course, we had a big flask of coffee there and sandwiches and stuff. And um, my dad sat and watched a full day of kids playing football and chatting to all of the other parents there. And of course, we were there with his family as well. Um, and I actually put this on Facebook because I can remember saying to my dad, how are you, dad? Are you all right? And he said, life doesn't get much better than this. The sun's shining. I'm with my family and I'm watching my grandson play football. So that's a man who isn't dead, is it? No, that's a man who's thoroughly enjoying his life whilst in the midst of his Alzheimer's disease. Um, Christmas came and went. Um, and of course, we all, as we usually do, got together as a family. But on this Christmas, we didn't really quite know how many more Christmases we would have left. So we made things extra special. Um, we took more photos. Um, we just focused on my dad quite a bit more. And as I said, my dad was like a real fun loving and um, sociable guy. And he just, he just went for it. Um, yeah. So you can see him there kind of, uh, together with all of these <laughs> fluffy animals, which kind of was just typical of my dad. My dad looked like a bit of slapstick and um, fun element to everything. Um, my dad only had one more Christmas after this photo. Um, so yeah, time for us was running out, but as you can see, my dad's not dead. Um, my dad is smiling and happy, surrounded by his family with a really good network of people around him. And, and obviously, Dementia Forward, with the charity, um, underpinning pretty much everything he did. Because every time something changed with my dad, if it was something that we couldn't work out, we just went back to the charity and asked, what, what should we do? And we were always given just really great help. Um, we were also linked in with like other communities. My dad was out uh, with my mum having luncheon clubs and, um, and he was uh, singing with Jessa. If anybody's in York, you know, Jessa's singing group. My dad and my mum really liked those groups. Um, there's a lot of life that you can still live with dementia. Uh, you just really need to be positive and look forward, but you also need to have help because it can be really quite tricky. And we were dead lucky because in North Yorkshire we had that help, we had dementia forward. So if you're in North Yorkshire and you do need some dementia support, please come to our charity and we'll help you out. It was my dad's 80th birthday as well. Um, and family got together and we celebrated his 80th birthday. Now my dad was quite poorly at this time. Um, he, he couldn't really 100% work out um, who family members were. Um, and that's my daughter there. She made him cake. <laughs> and uh, my dad had a, as I say, a very sweet tooth at the time. So he really liked this cake. But what we did as well, we um, we told the kids that because granddad had a brain disease, that these things would happen. And they got it straight away. Kids get it straight away. And so the kids weren't really phased about this. You know, so when granddad forgot who they were, what their names were and, and stuff like that, they weren't phased by it. Because they knew that they could sit next to granddad, they could give him a hug. They could still chat with him, um, and Granddad still loved them, and they still loved him, um, and that was really the most important part in, in all of this. So the whole family got together, um, and we had like an absolutely smashing day. Um, so this was the, the year before my dad died, um, and as I said, my dad was quite poorly here, but he's still not dead. He's still surrounded by very great things and happenings, and there was still a lot of life. Um, and my dad is getting worse, but you know, that's, that's a normal part of getting old. We're all going to get worse. 
and we're all going to die at some point, aren't we? Um, but my dad isn't dead here. And when things changed further, we would do stuff like go out for walks. My dad liked walking with our dog. Um, and so we would drive up to Benningborough Hall and we'd walk through the, this little foresty bit. Um, and we'd all go for a coffee and cafe at the end. Um, and my dad still had some of his mobility here. It was getting, it was getting quite worse. Um, but he could still do a bit before he ended up, um, in his wheelchair. Um, but that was purely down to the fact that he just, um, was struggling to, to walk. It, it wasn't, my dad's had quite a lot of, um, sort of arthritis stuff in his life. So this kind of went, um, this went and we knew it was going to happen. Um, but didn't stop my dad from getting out and about. We just had to do it in a different way. And, um, yeah, we, we still did it as a family. And my dad was living, was living with it. Um, and we were making sure that my dad was living with it. Um, these are all the things that my dad did um, in the last couple of years of his life, the last couple of three years of his life. He was with the grandkids. Um, that top picture there was at the mining museum um, that he went to. Um, he still is in love with my mum. They had a very beautiful marriage. Um, my dad spent time with the grandkids. Um, and that that right hand slide was uh, Newcastle United scoring a goal. <laughs> and I just happened to get it on camera with my dad cheering. Um, I think I just want to end here by saying, um, dementia, yeah, it is tough, but you certainly don't die the second that you have your diagnosis. And when things change, you don't die again. You don't continue to die. Uh, what you can do is you can continue to live. That's exactly what we did with my dad. We continue to live. And it can be done. Um, if you need support doing that, and you're in the North Yorkshire area, come to Dementia Forward. I would like to finish off, though, by saying that although I hear, obviously, dementia, I just wish it wasn't around. What dementia did allow us to do was to spend the last years of my dad's life knowing what was coming and therefore really embracing every single day and every single moment. Every celebration had an extra special appeal to it. Um, we would never have got that had my dad died suddenly in Durham. If he'd had something where he just literally went really, really quickly and we didn't have time to do all of this, we would have missed out on this. And knowing that the end was coming with my dad allowed us as well to, every single conversation that we had with my dad, we all finished that conversation every time we left them with, I love you. And then when my dad couldn't talk anymore, we would say, I love you, and we would blow him a kiss. And my dad would blow us a kiss back. Um, we found different ways to communicate. My dad knew that he was loved right till the end. And I know that because I spent the last night with my dad, and he died um, the following day. And my dad was very end-of-life dementia at this point, and I still had a communication with my dad. We still connected. And I... I don't look back on that whole time with me dad with pain. I look back with gratitude. Um, and I also don't look back with any what ifs because I just know that we filled all of them gaps. Um, and we were able to kind of do that with the support of Dementia Forward and know that there is a life worth living with dementia. And that's really all I want to say about that. Contact Dementia Forward if you are living in the North Yorkshire area. Or if you have young onset dementia and you're living anywhere nationally, um, we can help you out with um, making the experience of dementia as best as it possibly can be.